Well, hi again, everybody, and welcome to another video in the Ultimate Starter series compilation. I am Fist25, and you're about to watch the video of sections seven and eight, which is all about flying and missions. Uh, flying is such a huge part of this game. It's how you get to most places, and obviously this is a space sim, so you have to be able to travel. Um, so we're going to learn all about flying and how to start your ship and how to do all that fun stuff. And then we're going to get into missions and how to use the mission system in the Moby glass, because that's, well, that's, you need something to do in the game, right? So you're going to need to be able to use that system. And this is more than just the Moby glass tutorial. If you saw that one earlier. And so, uh, let's get this video started. All right, everybody, we're at section seven now. We're, we're getting down to the end. And this may be one of the most uh, important sections of the game because we're going to go over flying and how to call your ship and how to take off uh, the whole deal. Um, it's This isn't going to be that long of a section, but it's probably an important one, especially for a new pilot. So we are in first person now. I'm at Port Tressler, which is the orbital station that is above Microtech. And we're going to go here to the console. Um, we, we've kind of already gone over the ASOP terminals here uh, before, but we're going to we're going to go over it again. I'm going to click on it using F and click. I'm going to scroll down. And because I want to show you how to call for a takeoff, I'm going to choose a bigger ship. So we're going to grab the Drake Caterpillar. And we'll go ahead and grab the pirate version. And we're going to click on retrieve. I know the ship is here because it said it was here. It wasn't uh, a claim or anything like that. Um, so I'm able to retrieve the ship. It is at hangar three. This station does have pads and, uh, but this ship is big enough that it requires a hangar. So now I'm going to go over to the elevator. I'm going to hit F and left click and call the elevator. And if you forget what hangar you're in, you can look around the screen for your marker and it's, oh, it's hangar three. And it tells you how far away you are. So on the elevator panel, I'm going to click hangar three. And we're going to come down. Now these, con these controls that I'm going to be using this mouse and keyboard, which I imagine a lot of you are going to be using, especially when starting out. Um, I do have a host ass set up with my joysticks means hands on stick and stick. So two joysticks, uh, but we're not going to use that for the, for this tutorial. That's a whole separate video. So as we come out into the hangar, we can see here is my Drake Caterpillar and it is a large ship. Um, it has the uh, fourth largest storage capacity of any ship in the game. For a long time, it was number one. You can see graphics are phenomenal, has great color on it. You can see just how long the ship is and why it's a huge cargo ship, because each one of these modules can contain cargo. <coughs> oh, okay, so there's only one way in from the ground onto the Caterpillar. And that is to call this elevator. We're going to go ahead and go. To, notice there is a, a little dot there that says elevator. Whenever you come near your ship, there, if you have it turned on, which you should by default, it'll be a little area that'll tell you, hey, you got to click on this or go up to here to extend your elevator or the stairs or the ramp or whatever ship you have, however you get in it. It'll show you all of the entrance points. You notice there's only one here on the Caterpillar from the ground, and that is the elevator. So we're going to hold down F, go over the elevator button, and left click for deploy. And here we go. Here comes the Caterpillar elevator. And we are just going to step onto the elevator. Notice that's the ship inside there. We are going to go over here and click on the retract button. And the elevator will take us up into the ship. Now, this is not a tour of the Caterpillar. If you want to see that, I have a whole other video on that. But we are going to not go that way. We're going to actually go this way. 
Uh, it's been a while since I drove a caterpillar. And we're going to make our way up into the bridge. This is the engine room. We're going to come over here to the stairway. The bridge on this ship just happens to be on the upper deck. We'll hit the hallway. We'll come in here. I really love Drake's uh, style and aesthetic. Really lived in. And notice all the lights are off. So it's actually pretty, pretty dark in here. And there we go. This is the captain's seat, the pilot's seat. Okay, now we have our HUD and all that stuff up here. We're going to turn on the ship by hitting the R button. So there we go. We clicked R. We'll get the intro. And the R button is important because it turns on everything. It turns on your, your engines. It turns on your power. It turns on your weapons. It turns on your shield. It's the flight ready button. You can do individual systems. If I wanted to turn off my shields right now, I would hit the O key on the keyboard. Shields down. If I wanted to turn off my weapon systems, I would hit the P key on the keyboard. Weapons, Weapons off. If I wanted to turn off my engines, I would hit the I button. Engines offline. engines offline. If I wanted to turn off actual electrical power, I would hit the U key. Oops, well, it's because weapons were off. So if I hit it again, if I hit it again, it turns off everything. But I could turn everything back on by hitting R. So that turns everything back on. So because I'm inside of a hangar, I can't necessarily just go. If you are on a pad, you can actually take off. Um, you don't have to call for takeoff or anything. You do have to call for a landing, but you don't have to call for a takeoff. So from a hangar, there's one of two ways to get those hangar doors in front of me open. I can either go to my Moby Glass by hitting F11, and that opens up the comms window. Or I can just hit F1, and then I click on the comm link button down on the bottom left. You go to over to Friends, and you'll see under Friends, you'll see Port Tressler is up here on the very top. If I click this, it'll send a message to Port Tressler to, I want to take off, open the doors. There's another way to do that, and that's a little more immersive. It's inside the ship itself. You have to go down to your comms on your MFD. If you don't have an MFD with the comms on it, you can click on menu, go to the menu, go to the comms, and you see Port Tressler's on top. I have a bunch of friends here, and I can use the mouse scroll wheel. If I wanted to talk to them, I could. The only people that are in game, like see Ronan's in game, and... Uh, Sykes, Papa Hefe, Cobra's in game, Bahamut. All these people are in game, but I want to talk to Port Tressler. So I'm going to click on this little radio icon. And now it's hailing Port Tressler. I let go of the F key. And those doors are going to open. There we go. And he should say you're clear for launch, but... Oh, there we go. Okay. So now I'm going to go into an exterior view of the ship using drone cameras. And you do that by hitting the F4 key. This is the default exterior view. You're a little bit above and just a little bit behind my ship. Now to take off on this ship, it's not that bad because it's heavy on smaller ships that are more maneuverable and faster. You got to be a little bit careful. There could be something above you to actually lift up because I, I can hit forward, but nothing's going to happen to lift up. I have to hit the space bar and I'm holding it right now. You see my landing gear and nothing's happening. That's because right now the game turns your VTOL off. When you start the ship to turn on your VTOL, you're going to hit the K button. I know nothing happens on the ship. There's no transformation, but I should get more thruster power. Now, when I hold down spacebar, it still doesn't want to lift up. So I'm going to click on the boost button at this. Oh, there we go. It did lift up a little bit. So my VTOLs did work. If I'm going too high up and I can't, I'm like, oh, I got to stop it. You're going to hit the left control button to go down spacebar up. Left control down, and you just kind of find a balance. To move forward, you're going to hit W. And I'm holding it down right now. Notice how it's actually going pretty fast outside of this hangar. Once I clear the hangar, that hangar door will open. I know it's very dark out here right now as well. Um, let me see if I can find... Well, we're on the dark side of Microtech, so there's not going to be a whole whole lot of light going on here. But we'll solve that here in just a few minutes. Um, if you're in this third person view and you want to look around at like a free look, hold down the Z key 
and then move your mouse. And you can move your mouse in any direction you want. You could see different things. You could look at different things, kind of whatever you want. But let's say you're stuck over here and you can't quite get the view you want. To reset your exterior view, hold down the F4 key and hit the asterisk button on your number pad. That resets your external view. Now, if you look, you can see my landing gear are kind of hanging out down there on the bottom. I know it's a little bit hard to see. If you're in the exterior view, be careful not to move your mouse unless you if, unless you want to move your ship. That doesn't apply when you're in free look, but if I move the mouse right now, see how my ship is pitching because I'm moving my mouse up and down. If I move it left or right, my ship will yaw and you'll see it move in 3D space. Sometimes it's hard to figure out, oh, I got to stop. I got to stop this movement. Go back to first person by hitting F4 and you can see in the middle of the screen that little, tri uh, it's almost like a little triangle. That's the direction I'm trying to move my ship. If you want to center it, just go to the middle of the reticle and line up the dots. Now I'm not moving. But you see my landing gear is still out. So to retract your landing gear, you hit the N key, N for November. I'll hit it once and you'll see my landing gear comes up. Now I can reset my view and I can go back into first person mode by hitting F4 again. And you'll see over here on the side, my gear is actually not highlighted. Um, and that means it is up. Also, VTOL mode, the, the reason we were able to get a little bit up in that hangar was because I hit the K button. If I hit K again, my VTOL goes away. If you go into quantum travel, it will turn off your VTOL. Some ships use VTOL button to transform themselves. Some of them, like the Cutlass Black, will actually rotate the engines down and give you more lift. And then when you hit the VTOL button again to turn it off, the engines will rotate again and you'll have more uh, forward thrust. To move in cruise control mode, you're going to hit the C button. And I want you to pay attention what happens to this little red box right here when I hit C. Boom. Now I have this little carrot over that box. And what that means, this little, this little carrot means cruise control is engaged. This entire meter right here, this is uh, going to tell me my velocity, right? In meters a second. Right now, there's a, there's a line here that's kind of a green line and a red line. And the, the box is right there at the max. That is called, you might hear me say it, SCM speed or um, a combat maneuvering speed, ship combat maneuvering speed. What that means is you have... That is the maximum speed you can travel where you really have full authority of your ship. You'll be able to make turns, um, use your thrusters and, and all that. Because in space, it's not just engines. You have thrusters to make you strafe left, strafe right, go up, go down. Those keys still work in space. If I wanted to go up, I would hold down space bar. If I wanted to go down, notice this TVI indicator. That's my, that's my vector indicator. It tells me which direction my ship is actually heading. When it gets towards the center reticle, it fades out of view because that's the way my ship's heading. But if I hold down spacebar, you see the indicator goes up and it's going to go out of view. Well, it's going to keep going to the top and you'll notice it'll eventually come down. If I hit the con left control button, I'm, I will start to descend in the TV. I'll go that way. If I hit A, you will go to strafing left. If I hit D, you will start to strafe to the right. As you can see, the TVI moving. That's that's for mostly the controls. W is forward. And now I because I have cruise control on, I'm not actually going to do anything. I'm going to turn cruise control off. Notice the carrot is gone and our speed is decreasing. If I want to go faster or go for at least to where that box is, I hold down the W button. And you notice my sp speed is increasing. If I want to go backwards or in reverse, I hold down the S button. You notice my speed is going back down. Or if I just let go, I will slowly drift to a stop. You not necessarily should do that because you're in space and you should just keep going. There's a way to actually do that. Um, but I, that's kind of advanced flying. I'm not sure we're going to get into that. I'll talk about it briefly, though. Um, over here, we have a coupled and decoupled mode. And we have an ESP. I would recommend leaving ESP on. Um, ESP is enhanced stick precision. Uh, it's all about how 
when you're flying with a mouse, how or or a joystick, how accurate your your stick is really, and and kind of where little inputs don't make a huge difference. I keep it on. I would recommend you keep it on. The coupled and decoupled mode right now. Coupled is on, and it means while I'm flying forward, I will only fly if I have cruise control on or if I press down. Excuse me, if I press down on a key, right? If I turn decouple mode off, if like say I go cruise control and I turn decouple mode off, I will keep going in that direction and I don't have to hit a key. So it, it basically decouples, uh, it lets you, it lets you just keep on going in, in like a free flight without actually having to use engine power. Some people use that for certain things. Um, let's say you're in a dogfight and you're going forward 500 meters a second and you want to just you want to keep going in the same direction you're going, but you need to turn your ship around and shoot the bad guy behind you. You could decouple your ship, turn around and fire in in back of you. Like, well, well you'll actually firing in front of you, but your ship it was still going in the same direction it was going before. Then you could turn back around and recouple and you'll be going in the same direction you were before. So it's kind of an advanced technique. Okay, now let's say we're, we're here. We're going to engage our cruise control and we're going to go to our SCM speed of, I think it was 95. Um, notice that when I move my mouse and I move the ship, my speed decreases. It's because I'm going in a different direction and my thrusters have to move my ship around in order to get there. Once my TVI and my reticle and everything line up, I will get the maximum SCM speed right now of 98. If I want to go faster than that, if I want to raise the speed up into the red here, which is fine, it's not a danger or anything. You're not going to blow up the ship. It, you use the mouse wheel to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and mouse wheel up about halfway up. And you can see our engines are really getting powered on over there. And you'll see my velocity indicator come up into that red box. And we're going to be, it looks like in the, the, the high two sixties here, maybe two seventy once we're done. Okay. So now I'm speeding up, but I will have less maneuverability of this ship. If we're trying to make some kind of, man, of a new maneuver, if you're out in open space, who cares? Go faster, but there might be asteroids around or other debris and stuff. You don't want to run into. You might want more control to go to the maximum speed. Obviously just turn your velocity, uh, all the way up as you get closer to the top there's a the range from the very top to about three quarters is much bigger than it is from scm speed to about the three quarter line that's where you can really fine tune when you go all the way to the top you're going to go as fast as your ship can go i still have cruise control on and i mean that's fine but i just let you know i still have cruise control on if i turn it off and i hit c my ship will slow down so I have to hold down W to keep it going. So there we go. That's the basics on how to how to move a ship. Um, this ship's max speed looks like around 892, it seems. And you'll notice the engines will. They'll actually change, right? So I'm slowing down right now. I know you can't see it. Um, and now I'm going to put my mouse key back up. And you'll see the engines are starting. They're actually pushing now because they're trying to reach that that maximum speed once they do they will start to not power down but they will have less of the fire so you can see the fire is kind of going down that's another indication that you're at the speed that you're targeting so if i do want to slow down let's say i have a key bind to take my speed back to scm speed but if you want to do that you're going to have to set that up yourself but let's go ahead and do that and i'm going to rotate around the ship and you can see that there are somewhere there are retro thrusters firing um most ships you can actually see them and they're they'll be firing uh to slow you down but apparently in the caterpillar it's not showing that maybe on the bottom there's a little bit but not really it's not really showing us that um if you see my velocity is still up there at 500s if you want to slow down faster you can hit the space brake button which is x if I hold down X, you'll notice it's using some of my afterburner, my boost here on the left. You see that boost indicator? It's using basically afterburner to help you slow down. You can turn that on or off. If you use boost, it will be faster. 
Now, let's say I actually want to go up faster. Going forward is actually pretty quick. If I want to even speed that up, I can use boost again. And you use boost by holding down the left shift button. And you can see that my engines are an afterburner. And now I'm starting to reach my speed. Your boost will run out. Notice you're, I'm down at zero in the red. I cannot use boost again until that number comes up into the green. You control boost via your power triangles. And so over here on your power triangle, you have your shields, you have your thrusters or your boost and your weapons. If I move this guy all the way to the bottom for 100% thrusters, you'll see that this number goes up significantly faster, right? Now, if I balance out my power by hitting the F8 button, you can see my triangle is balanced now. Um, you'll see the boost go up much slower. So the buttons for the power triangle, uh, the first one concerns weapons, right? You can see I have, oh, here's all the ammo counts I have for my lasers. 61, 56, 56, 61. These are different size lasers. The M5As are bigger. As I shoot them, the ammo count drops down, right? If I let go, it'll eventually recharge. This is a balanced recharge. If I want more power to weapons, notice the ammo count, 61 and 56. If I hold down F5, and, and there we go. You can see my weapons here, are, or my, my power triangle is fully on weapons. Notice my counts went up to 74 and 67 because I'm diverting power to my weapons. So now my weapons will not necessarily be faster or anything, but I will have more ammo to shoot them. And when I let go, they will actually recharge much, much faster. What am I giving up for that? Well, I'm giving up shields and I'm giving up boost or, or thruster power, basically. So if I wanted to, say, slow down real quick and I use my boost, well, when I let go, my boost recharge is going to be extremely, extremely slow. I can hit F8, balance that out. And you notice boost is coming up. Um, the only other thing I can do, th this ship has size 3 shields. I don't necessarily want to do a shield tutorial here, um, but I will go to menu. And I'll bring up my actual shields. This is this screen is the ship status screen. It tells you at what damage you have and kind of where your shields are at. The shield screen itself tells you how many, uh, how much health your each facing has. Uh, you have a forward, back, left, and right, and they overlap each other in three dimensions on the ship. And so you have 25% times four is 100%. Um, the danger of moving your power triangle around is that you will have less power for shields and boost if you need them at some point. So just keep that in mind. If your shields are really low and you're kind of out of battle, well, then you can hold down the F6 key. And that puts all of your power towards shields. Consequently, if you want to give all your power, I'm, I'm sorry, F6 is thrusters, guys. F6 is thrusters. If you want to give all your powers to shield, you have, hold down the F7 key. Holding that, and you can do this on the triangle too if you want. You can kind of move things around to where you want it. This bottom one is thrusters. This is, so F5 is weapons, F6 is thrusters, F7 is shields. Or you can move the triangle around yourself. So now we're at 100% shields. If we were people were shooting us, then we would have a, a good chance to just regen the shields real quick. To balance everything out to zero, where everything is equally charged, you can hit the F8 button. Just tap it. Or you can go over here to your power triangle and just put it in the middle. And it usually snaps to it. Okay, so now we did that. We showed you how to move. Let's show you how to do rolls. When you're in the ship and you want to roll to the right with a mouse and keyboard, you hit the E key or echo and you will roll your ship to the right. If you want to roll to the left, you hit the Q key or Quebec. There you go. You can, so you can roll your ship. You can, when you move the mouse, you're controlling the pitch with up and down. And if you go left and right with your mouse, you're controlling the yaw. You control the Z axis, the up and down axis with space bars up. I know you can't really see it. And the control goes down. So that's your axis control. Roll is E, um, Q and E. W makes you go forward. S makes you go back. A makes you go straight left. D makes you straight right. And X is uh, the slowdown or space break key. C is for cruise control. Um, this ship doesn't have any missiles, but if I wanted to go into missile operator mode, I would 
click down by default, the middle mouse button. If I click it, it would go into missile operator mode. I'd be able to shoot missiles. Um, but this ship doesn't have any missiles. The The key to, to fire your group one weapons is your left mouse button. If you have group two weapons, you can only have two groups. They're actually called zero and one. Group zero is your left mouse button. Um, your right mouse button is group two. I don't have anything linked up to group two, but we can fix that real quick. We'll go ahead to one of our MFDs and we will go to our weapons side. Notice it's the same thing as that guy. Um, you can see our guns. We have zero and one, all of our usage and everything. And our missiles, we do have five missiles, but I don't think I can fire from this station, if this thing even has missiles. But from the guns page, you can see everything is tied to group, group zero. If I wanted to take the two M5As, I can click these and make them group one. Now, when I left click, you'll see only two weapons fire. If I hold down the right mouse button, the other two fire. If I hold them together, they both fire. So you can mix and match whatever you want. These settings do not save. So you'll have to do it every time you go back uh, into the ship, or I think even into the cockpit seat. What else? Um, so we entered the ship. We found the pilot seat. We uh, kind of went over the, the basic controls of flying. Um, we flew the ship out. We, we had to call for clearance to fly the ship out because we were in a hangar. Like I said, if you're at a pad or you start on a pad, you can just lift off and go. Um, if you need to land either on a pad or into a hangar, depending on where you're going, you will have to go back to the communication screen and you will have to call for a landing. You can either do it via the ship terminal or the comm in the ship, or you can go into your Moby glass and do it. Um, okay, let's talk about the last part of the basic flying is quantum travel. So there's such thing as a blind quantum jump, and we're going to do that right now so we're going to go back down to scm speed and we're going to hit the b button b is what spools up your quantum drive b is in bravo boom so now you can see my quantum system is online and it's starting to spool now this top number now it says, it says spooling complete now that is my actual quantum drive spooling up getting the power ready to go the calibration on the left, I have to calibrate to something and get 100% calibration in order to actually make a jump. Both of these have to be complete in order to jump. How do I know where to go? Well, you see that diamond marker up there? That's going to be an orbital marker. And if I put my reticle of my ship, not the diamond here for quantum, but the reticle of my ship on it, it'll start to calibrate. The quantum drive I have in here is actually pretty fast. Boom. Calibration's ready. Spooling is complete. Well, all I have to do now is hold down the B button and we will enter quantum and we will go about 710 kilometers. Let's do that now. Boom. So now we have entered quantum and the default behavior of the quantum drive is to re-spool the quantum drive. And there we go. So now we have a different view of, I'm going to turn off the quantum drive by just tapping B and it turns off quantum. Now we have a different view of Microtech here. We're actually on the light side of Microtech. You can actually see the ship and the paint scheme and all that. When this game is dark, I mean, it's dark. So again, reset F4 and uh, a number pad asterisk to reset my controls. And let's do a actual plotted jump now. And we'll actually go down to the planet. So I'm going to hit F2 and that brings up my Moby glass and brings up the star map. You can't, you can actually do it from some ships. You can, you can do stuff from the ship, but the fastest way to do this is using the star map. I am up here at Microtech. I know I'm up there so I could double click Microtech or I can hit the little GPS tracker thing and it'll find me over here at Microtech. Now I know I'm above the planet right now. So what I could do is cl double click the planet. And now I can use my mouse to zoom in and zoom out. If I wanted to go to Calliope, um, yes, I would double click Calliope. And now I have all the places I can go there. So we'll go back to where we are. We'll double click on Microtech. It zooms in a little bit. I can use my mouse. If I move, if I click and hold outside of the planet, like in dead space with my left mouse button, I can rotate everything in 3D space. 
If I hold my right mouse button down, it's in 2D space. So up, down, left, right. Left mouse button, 3D space. So let's say we wanted to go to, uh, let's go. Uh, I don't really want to go to New Babbage, but um, we'll go there anyway. It is the big circle here on the planet. So I'm going to click New Babbage. I know I got New Babbage because up here in the top right of the screen, it actually says New Babbage. If I wanted to go to Port Tressler, you see that green line that goes to Port Tressler? I click it and Port Tressler shows up. To plot a jump, I would actually hit set route, the big blue button on the top. But that's where we came from. We came from Port Tressler. So we will go ahead and clear that route. We'll double click the player of the game. We'll come back in and you see new Babbage over here. I'm going to click it. I'm going to hit set route. And so there's there's new Babbage. You know, it's set because in the navigation mode, it's set. When you leave the Moby glass, it will be the only quantum marker available for you to spool to. So we can see new Babbage is way down here and it's in the dark. To get there, you're going to hit the B button to start spooling up your quantum drive. I'm going to rotate the ship a little bit there. The ship might rotate on its own when you enter quantum. That is normal. So now to actually enter quantum, we'll do it from third person. I'll hold down the B button. So see how we're getting closer to the planet? Normally, when you go from outside of a planet into like a city or something, you're not going to have the crazy hyperspace graphics. You're just going to be going around the planet. Now, in third person mode, I can move around the ship and stuff. And now you can see the lights for New Babbage. And we are upside down. <laughs> so <laughs> important to note that. Once we are out of quantum, It'll say quantum drive is off, even though it's really not. I can hit B again to turn off the quantum. Go into my third person and I can actually use the roll button to roll around. Now it's dark outside. How do I know where the airport is or the spaceport? There's many different uh, roads and avenues and it can actually get really confusing, especially at night because Unless you know these cities really well, you don't necessarily know where stuff's at. Even in third person view, it's kind of hard to see. Um, I know for sure, especially look at first person view, it's very hard to see. I know that the, uh, the, the train tracks that are just above the nose of this ship leading to that little thing with the light on it, that is actually the spaceport. Um, I, I do have a reshade filter turned on, MVG mode. And if I turn that on, now we can actually see the spaceport in front of us. It's that big building where the where the Gravlev tracks lead to. If you want to learn more about Reshade, I have a video on that. Go ahead and look it up. There's two videos. Watch the first one. Um, if you want to learn about mining Reshade, watch the second one. Um, but that's basically MVG mode. If I go back to regular mode, this is what we get. Now, I do have reshade turned on here, so it's a little bit darker for me. If I turn reshade off, you can see the gamma changed a little bit, and it's easier for me to see the spaceport better. Um, once we get close enough, those lights will actually start to blink red. And we, we can go faster than SEM speed while we're in atmosphere, but we will have decreased mobility and decreased speed in atmosphere as well. I'm going to go ahead and use my boost. Now you see the lights, see the red lights coming on for, for the spaceport. Now that we're getting closer to it, yeah, you're just now starting to see the third set of lights turn on. So usually if you see a blinking red light, kind of like what we see now at the spaceport, that's a place where you can land. Now we're not actually going to land there. We're going to go back up into space and land at Port Tressler. The... All of the orbital stations, Port Olisar for Crusader, Port Tressler for Microtech, Bagini Point for Arc Corp, and Everest Harbor for uh, Lorville and Hurston, they are all basically directly above the major city, um, the landing area at the planet. But in order to, to get there, you have to break atmosphere. Microtech's atmosphere, you can start to quantum at roughly 12,000 meters. You can see with the HUD right now, I'm, I'm getting a positive pitch angle because these numbers are positive and they're going up. My altitude right now is 6,900, about almost 7,000 meters. I need to keep going up in order to break 12,000. 
Uh, you can see my speed on the left is actually decreasing because I'm climbing up. And my HUD flipped around. Like, that's normal as well. Um, you can try to use your ship to control where you're going. But if you want to go straight up from a planet, you want to go 90 degrees up. And you can see I'm going exactly straight up from New Babbage. You can uh, you can even give yourself a, a little more a little boost if you're on a big ship. Yeah, I mean you'll use up all your boost doing it, but you can give yourself a little boost to help get you out of atmosphere. Some ships that that are going to come out in the future that are really 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 big, they'll be able to land, but it's, they're going to either need a, a a tug to help them get out of atmosphere, or they're going to need uh, uh, something else to help them. Uh, but this ship is not that is not that big enough. If, is that a word? I don't know. You can see now that we have definitely broken 12,000 uh, meters. So now we can hit B for our quantum. And we can do a blind jump. Notice that the, the square here, that is Port Tressler, all of those orbital stations look like a square. All of the cities look like home plate in baseball, American baseball. So now Port Tressler, everything is lined up. Or everything spools are complete. I'm going to hold down B. And we will quantum there. So now we're quantum. We're at 24 kilometers from it. Um, really hard to see, right? Because it's on the dark side of Microtech. That's why I like using um, the MVG. Um, there we go. So you can you can see it in the station, at least the silhouette, better in MVG mode. I'll turn that off. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to quantum to... We'll, we'll go to the map. We'll find out where we're at. We're just going to go out here to Euterpe. We're going to set a route. So first thing we have to do is go to an OM1 marker and then Euterpe. Because I actually set a route, the only markers that are available to me is the waypoints that I plotted. So we're going to go ahead and quantum to OM1. It'll be really fast because it's less than a thousand kilometers away. And boom. So we quantum there. Our navigation system is already set to go to the next waypoint. And there's Euterpe. We're going to let everything spool and calibrate. And we're going to hold down B. Oh, no, it didn't work. This is a common bug. If I hold down B, nothing is happening. This happens all the time in Star Citizen. Just go back into your map. Hit F2. Oh, no, it actually took us. So there was that was a that was a delay. Right now, you can see that we have no actual quantum stuff going on. Another bug with 316. It's really annoying because you don't necessarily know if you're in quantum um, and the stars just s stick. They don't do anything. So we're going to turn off our cruise control. We're going to turn off our quantum. And now this is one of the moons of Microtech, Euterpe. And if we turn back over this way, we should be able to see Microtech. There it is. There's Microtech. It's I mean, it's a it's a rather large planet compared to its moons. So if we hit B again. Oh, I'm sorry. That was Cleo. That was Cleo. Microtech's way up here because we're on the farthest moon out there. So let's go to one of the other moons. Let's go to Calliope. We're going to do a blind jump this time. It's 125,000 kilometers, and we're going to hold down B. And once again, quantum. the quantum graphics got stuck because of poor, poor server performance. Probably because Xenothreat's going on right now, and I'm, I'm filming a video. But normally it kind of looks like a hyperspace thing. Um, it'll probably happen at other points in the video. So here we are. Here's Calliope. And we can go to the orbital markers on Calliope. Or we can go to one of the ground stations or something like that on Calliope as well. Now the last thing I want to show you here is we're going to... Our engines are turned off. We are going to go ahead and turn off our quantum. And we are going to hold down the Y key to get out of our seat. Now that we're out of our seat, we're going to come to the back here and I'm going to show you there is a way to actually log off in the ship. That means you can log off in the ship and you're basically going to sleep. But here are some of the quarters back here and uh, we're going to hold down F. We're going to lie down on this bed. And I know that was kind of a weird graphic. It looked like we lied down there. Um, when you're in the bed, you have to hold down F and you have to actually look around until you see something that says get up or log off. 
There we go. So get up and log out. We're actually going to hit log out. We let go of our keys. We get this weird graphic because server is garbage. And it's going to take us to the main menu. There we go. So we're now we're at the main menu. We're going to go back to the persistent universe. New Babbage, Port Tressler. It thinks we're at Port Tressler. Um, you might actually have to give it a few minutes for the system to register that you are indeed asleep on your ship. Um, while we do that, I am going to give it a, a, a just at least a minute or so. One thing we can talk about is quantum travel with friends. You can quantum travel with your friends at the same time. It's a mess. The system is not great. I know they're working on quantum this year, but for right now, if your friends are near you, I think they have to be within a few kilometers of you and you're all pointed in the same direction to the next quantum target. Let's say it's a mission target and you all spool and calibrate at the same time. Whoever, I think whoever spooled up first can hold down the quantum button and hold down B basically, and everybody will go at the same time. When you do this, and it's automatic if you're in a party, right? You can only do this if you're in a party, but it's automatic. If you do this, you will move at the same speed as the slowest quantum drive so that everybody arrives at the destination at the same time. That means if you have a size three drive and it's really fast, like a TS2, and you can make it from our corp to Microtech in under four minutes, but you're traveling with a Hornet or something with an Atlas and it takes eight minutes, it's going to take you eight minutes as well. So let's see if we're going to wake up on our Caterpillar. Hopefully we will. We're going to go back, enter the verse. Depending on how many entities the game has to load, which I'm going to go to the screen to show us our entities. Um, in the top right, you can see there's an FPS indicator. Um, it has server time, universe time, but on the, the most very left thing shows is entities and that's loading. The more entities you have to load, the slower your load time is going to be, uh, in the game. So let's see it. Come on entities. So we're at 34,000. I can tell you when you're coming up towards, uh, Orison, your entities are like over a hundred thousand. So it takes forever. There we go. So we got uh, Rowena Dooley trying to have us help out with a, a Xeno threat. But our entities are, is at basically 40, I think it's 48,000 it says. Okay. So now, guess what? We successfully logged out on our ship. And we are going to log in in our ship. And that happened. So now, we're outside of the ship. <laughs> We were in here and uh, it had us get out of bed and we clipped through the ship. Unfortunately, this game has a ton of bugs and this is just happens to be one of them. But because our ship's not moving, we're actually OK. I don't know if I can open these doors from the outside. It doesn't look like I can. So that means, guess what, guys? We got to go get into the ship the same way we would normally get into it on the bottom with the uh, with the way we would enter the ship normally. And it's going to work. So we're going to get on our plate. It, look, it has gravity, right? I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and retract. Most of the uh, either cargo bays or the elevator or lifts or something like that, like this ship has do have gravity. So there we go. We can do that and uh, that's one way to log out, another way to log in. And I'm just, I want to show you that we're in the same position. Sometimes, very rarely, but sometimes you, the server's so bad, it doesn't remember where you're at, so it puts you in the middle of the sun. Um, hopefully that's not the case this time. Our ship is still powered up and ready to go. I'm going to hit F2. And you can see we're, with the little blue triangle, we are up here at Microtech. So we're actually out here by Calliope. Um, if we move the ship around, we should be able to see it. There's Calliope. So we are, we did log off exactly where we were supposed to, and we logged back in in space exactly where we we're supposed to. So um, 
Other things with flying, some of the other shortcut buttons, if you are in battle and you need to use your countermeasures, you use the H key. H key is a basically a flare. I think it's called a decoy in this game. And uh, so if I hit H, you'll see that flares launch. And if I hit the J key, it's called noise. And it kind of is a chaff. It kind of looks like a little flak thing that comes out. Those are your two types of countermeasures. If you have a gimbaled weapon, um, you hit the G key and these basically these dashed lines come into view. Now, both of these weapons are gimbaled, but they have they have a little kind of a weird weird field of fire because they're in different positions on the ship. But if I hit the G key once, it takes me into automatic mode. That means if I have a target in front of me, my my guns will turn on their gimbal and they will fire towards the target as long as that target is somewhere and uh, the pip for the target is in the these dash circles. If I hit G again, it takes me into targeting mode. This means I can move my guns around however I want them to so I can find the pip myself and then use that targeting mode to try to hit them. I like it automatically if I have gimbals. If I hit G one more time, it turns it into lock mode. And under lock mode, it just fires directly straight ahead at the reticle. Um, other things about the HUD, we already talked about weapons, your pitch ladder, your velocity. Um, here's your fuel gauges right here. This is my quantum fuel gauge. This is my hydrogen fuel gauge. Um, your decoy count, your noise count. If I use a decoy right now, see it went down to 20. If I use a noise, it went down to eight. You do have to pay to get those refilled. Um, this actually is a compass. <laughs> this tells you what heading you're going to. Um, a lot of bearings are going to be relative though. So, you know, keep that in mind. This guy up here is your heat. How much heat you're putting out on your ship, your IR signature, which this is really, really high because it's 18,000. Um, over here, this is your electromagnetic signature again, really high 25,000. And then this in the middle is my cross section signature. This will never change. Um, these two can change depending on what you have equipped. And if you turn stuff off. My cross section will always be 40,000 because Caterpillar is a really big ship and cross section missiles probably are not going to miss. You have to try to spoof them with countermeasures. So I think that's about it, guys. That's basic flying tutorial um, with the Drake Caterpillar. When we get into missions, you might see me use a smaller ship and stuff like that. Oh, I, we, I guess we do need to do one last thing. We need to go back and we need to land um, at Microtech. So let's see if we can fly Microtech, we can do We're actually going to go to Port Tressler and land because it's easier to land a big ship in space. So we're going to blind jump, well, not blind, but we're going to spool up to Port Tressler without using the map. This is what quantum travel is supposed to look like, kind of like hyperspace travel. But I guess we're on a different server now, better performance. OK, so Port Tressler is in front of us. Somewhere. Where are you, Port Tressler? If you lose, <laughs> there's Port Tressler, because it looks like a square. So we're, we're pretty close to it. We're 23 out. It's still on the dark side of Microtech. So I am going to, oh, this happens all the time as well. The server lags as things spawn in, and it'll turn your quantum back on. So I'm going to hit quantum. I'm going to turn it off. Everything turns off. Now I'm going to turn on our MVG and look, we can actually see the station. So I'm going to speed up a little bit. I'm going to take cruise control off. It's very important that you take cruise control off. Um, because if you don't, you're probably going to run into something. So uh, if you want, you can keep the quantum on to figure out how far you are away from the station. You don't really need to do that because as you get closer, um, you'll see a little red indicator and some text. It'll say, please call ATC to land. And Port Tressler will also show up on our on our comms display. So we're going to get out of MVG now that we can actually see the lights of the station. Probably going to slow down just a little bit. And, uh, you know, 
Oh, you see our comms right over here? It's basically doing an automatic hail to Port Tressler, saying, hey, we're in the area. When that's over, then we can yep, contact ATC to land. So on because I have friends, I have to scroll all the way to the bottom because it's new. I have to click on comms and it'll tell me where to go. Now I'm waiting for the comm to finish for that guy to say that. And then your landing bay will be this blue indicator. Oh, there it is with a downward Chevron. Like I said earlier, to turn lights on your ship, you hit the L button. It's not going to help right now too much because we're still pretty far away. We're going to go down to SCM speed. Okay, now I can see the hangar, right? If I hit L, it's very, very dark. So lights help a little bit. Some ships have better lights than others. To land, I called for a landing. You see the doors opening. I need to drop my landing gear. That is the November button, the end button. And I'm going to hit that. You see my landing gear come down. I get the, the voice. And as I come in here, yes, you can easily land in first person. <laughs> I'm barely hitting the keys right now. And notice it says collision alert. I like to land in third person, to be honest with you. You're not always going to be that far away. <laughs> You can be that far away. You hold down F4 and you use you use your scroll wheel on the mouse. And just keep in mind that you are uh, above the ship in this view, but this hangar is plenty big enough to come in and land. And there we go. We're real close. Now, one thing that you could just go hit control and land straight away doing this. One thing Java likes to do is when you get real close to landing is to hit the hold down the end key and it will automatically take your ship you got to be pretty close and it will land it for you automatically so it's going to do that and it's going to perfectly center the landing as well okay we are landed we should see those hangar doors close yep and the guy tells you landing is complete now you notice we are down on hydrogen quantum fuel and decoys and noises and we probably have a little bit of damage to our thrusters with wear and tear we're going to hit f1 on the moby glass we are going to click on uh, vehicle maintenance services. And then we have repair, restock, refuel, refuel. We're going to repair all the little things like our thrusters. We're going to restock our chaff and flare. We're going to refuel our hydrogen. Yes, we used 1400 worth of hydrogen just flying around and barely any quantum, but we need to refuel the quantum. We're going to click confirm. And then we're going to wait. While we're doing this, you can so that guy was in the elevator um, while we're doing this. You can actually watch everything fill up. It just finished our quantum. That was that beep, beep, beep sound. And you can see our hydrogen is very slowly filling up. This is a lot of mass to move around. So that's why it takes so long to actually fill up. Once that's done, you'll see the decoy and the noise actually go up to what it's supposed to be as well. Yeah, it can take a while to fill up uh, fuel on a big ship. If you if you have an 890 jump, um, which is massive amounts of fuel, it takes forever. Uh, decoy noise, they just went up. And so now we're good. If you do have a huge amount of repairs, you're going to want to keep an eye on that ship status screen after they refuel your ammunition because um, it'll start flashing on what things they're going to repair or replace. You can also go into third person view. And let's say you had a wing fall off or something like that. You could watch it get rebuilt in front of you. At this point, you can actually just get out. You don't have to shut down the ship, but I like to do it. So I'm going to hit I for engines. Shuts down our engines. You notice they're actually shut down. I'm going to hit U for power. Systems are off. I'm going to hold down Y to get out of the seat. Okay, now everything's dark in here, so... Um, you do have a flashlight if you hit T in first person, um, but I don't necessarily need it right now. There's, I wonder, yeah, I'm still in my armor. Okay. Engineering excess. Go this way, go this way. I'm just trying to make it to my elevator. Elevator access. There is other ways to get off the caterpillar, but this is... 
probably the most efficient. It's not that bad if you know the way. It, it can get confusing. Um, now that my elevator is down, I don't want anybody who's lurking around possibly to steal my ship. So I am going to retract it and then hop off real quick. And you'll see it start to retract. And now I can head back towards the ASOP terminal. Um, I'm going to go towards this yellow sign that says landing bay arrivals. I will find the elevator. Let's call the elevator. And it might take a minute. These are these are walk waiters. Look at this haircut. Oh, my God. And he's literally wearing the same torso armor as me. Um, this elevator's probably been moving all around. They, they are physicalized elevators. And there we go. So it's open. We're going to head towards the lobby. Then we're going to go up to the ASAP terminal and we're going to store the ship. You don't have to do this. If you stay in your hangar too long or on your pad too long, the station will store, store it for you. So uh, keep that in mind because it's pretty important. Um, you could just log off at this point, but yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I like to, I guess, be immersive and do things the way I do them. Um, so now I go to the ASAP terminal. I'm going to activate it. I'm going to go down to D for Drake. I'm going to find my pirate caterpillar. I'm going to hit store. It's going to say claim. Then it's going to say stored claim and retrieve. And it's stored over here. So that's it. Now my ship is actually stored and I'm ready to go ahead and log off. Speaking of which, at least in packs 3.16, 3.16.1, if I hit escape and I go quick game, I will more than likely lose the armor that I'm wearing. So don't do that. Actually exit to menu. Then when you're in the menu, then you can actually exit the game. So um, that's just a little trick. You will, if you do that, you will keep your armor. Um, I've, I've had it be hit and miss. And uh, I think CIG is aware of that. They just haven't fixed it yet so there you go guys basic flight tutorial i know it took a while i thought i was going to keep it short but there's just a lot to go over uh tips and tricks for new people if just be slow right like not slow flying around but when you're taking off do not move the mouse around keep that mouse steady or else you're going to be bouncing your ship all over everything if it's a hangar that opens on the top, like in Lorville, you just want to hit spacebar so you can get out of it from the top. Then you can fly around and stuff. If it's like uh, Port Tressler here, where it's a hangar bay that opens in front of you, you just want to lift up a little bit and then control your lift with either spacebar or control, left control to make it go down. And then you want to just get even and then fly out. Then you can start using the mouse to move your ship around if you want to. So... That's the biggest mistake I see with brand new people. They blow up their ships inside the hangar and then they have to go claim them and wait and they get frustrated and mad because <clears throat> they suck at flying or something. So it's not you. You just have to get used to how the game works. So thanks for watching. Our next segment is going to be on missions. It's actually going to be a short segment. Believe it or not, we're just going to go into the Moby Glass and go over all the different missions. Um, we're not even going to do a mission. We're just going to show you the types of missions there are. Um, and then after that's going to be a really long section with professions. Um, we're going to go over all the different professions in the game with some cool B roll. I hope um, after that, we'll go over uh, the state of the game, um, the kind of the current state 316.1 uh, and what's coming up in the future. Um, we will go over the game folders and then we're going to go over resources, things you can do to help yourself. And then we'll do on to final thoughts. So you're almost there. Thanks for watching. Well, Hey guys. So fist two five here. We're here at section eight, the missions section of the video. We're getting there. We're almost to the end. This section, I'm going to say it's not going to take too long. I hope it won't. Um, we got Xeno threat going on right now, so you might hear Special Agent Dooley interrupt me from time to time. But we are actually in our Mustang Alpha, which is a starter ship, which I imagine some of you would have. And we are sitting outside of Port Tressler, which is the orbital station outside of Microtech. And I want to go over the different types of missions and things like that. So 
to do missions, the first thing you want to do is hit F1 and open up your Moby Glass. I'm using my alternate account here because um, I, I don't have much missions done on her and things like that. So I wanted to show you the different options. So I know it might be hard to see, but on the bottom there with your mobile gas applications, you want to click on the contracts manager, but it looks like a clipboard and a pencil. Once you click on that, you are going to have a bunch of different tabs here on the top. They say general, personal, accepted history and beacons. Now, this is where you do missions, which are kind of the things you do in game, right? The, someone is hiring you to do a contract. They'll pay you a certain amount if you do it. There are legal and illegal missions in this uh, section. So take it as you will. We're going to go over it a little bit. Um, we're going to skip the general tab right now, but I'm going to tell you everything um, that is on the general tab is a legal mission. We will come back to it. The tab we're going to go to is the personal tab. Okay, so here we are at the personal tab, and the you see there's a supply re-up, uh, 9,000 Alpha UBC plus bonuses. Um, this is basically a mission to take to basically get some raw drugs, have them refined, and then take them to another place, um, and you'll get some money. Uh, obviously, this is illegal, so if you're scanned with these drugs, you will get a crime stat. Um, no, it's fairly safe, but you will get a crime stat. Um you can kind of tell this because the sender is not found. It's not from a specific person. If we go under the mercenary uh, uh, column here, we can see that mine worth taking is worth 35,000 alpha UC. It's worth a lot, but basically you're going to go to a mine that has already been claimed by other people and you're going to kill. So you're going to take out the sentries there and then you'll get some money which you're probably in monitored space, so you're going to get a crime stat. Uh, one mission under here is cover needed. Um, the from is an error, so it's basically uh, you go to a comm array, which you're going to get a crime stat when you get close to it. Um, take out the patrols. You're going to use a crypto key um, and hack the, uh, the comm array, and then boom, you'll be able to get your 25,000 alpha UC. They're actually very lucrative, but like I said, you'll get a crime stat. And the only way to get rid of that is either go to prison or to go hack your crime stat away. Um, under the accepted tab, we'll have to come back to that because that's after you accept a mission. Under the history tab, that is once you've done a mission, it'll show up under history, whether you succeeded or failed. The beacons tab. So the beacons are a little bit different. You can create three different types of beacons. Um, to create one, you go up here to the top right in the green, which says create beacon. And then you should, you get to pick your beacon type. And you have to remember how much your bank account balances. This character only has 56,000 alpha UEC. So you could create an escort beacon, a personal transport beacon, or a medical assistance beacon. Um, medical assistance you can also create right away if you're injured and you need medical assistance. You don't need to go to the screen. But let's say you're stuck somewhere and you don't have a ship or something like that and you need an escort somewhere or you need a personal transport somewhere. Well, you could say I pick personal transport. Then you're going to choose your destination. You could say I need to come to my ship or I need to go to, um, let's say, Everest Harbor. And I want someone with a minimum reputation level of uh, any or to five star, which most people don't rate other people. So <laughs> who knows what your rep's going to be. And then you enter a value up from, from one UBC up to the most UBC that you have. If someone accepts it and they come and they actually transport you there, then they'll get paid out of your money. Uh, the same kind of thing works for escort and the same kind of thing works for uh, medical assistance. So it's also a way if your friends can't find you, they don't have a party marker or something like that, and they really need to get to you, you could set up a, like a personal transport beacon for one alpha UBC and have them accept that. And then they could, they'll get a marker for you and they'll be able to quantum straight to you. So it's kind of a shortcut type of thing. So now let's backtrack. Let's go over to the general tab here. And I'm up on top of uh, Port Tressler. Um, so I am in the range of Microtep but there's only so many missions out at Microtech currently. Um, one of the things under here, I'm under the mercenary row and there you see there's a call to arms. 
Call to Arms is from the Civilian Defense Force, and it's basically if you kill anybody with a crime stat, whether it's a human or NPC, you will get an amount of money in addition to if you had to kill someone on a mission. So, for instance, if they had a crime stat, um, crime stat one, two, three, four, five, you know, crime stat five is worth a thousand alpha UVC. You, you can take this as a passive uh, mission. So I will go ahead and take call to arms. I will hit accept offer. Then it's going to take me to my accepted tab. Under accepted tab, I could then not hit abandon, but I hit untrack. Now that I've untracked that, it's still going to count. And my, my number is still going to go up and I'm still going to get money. But I'm not currently tracking that mission because there's nothing to track. I'm going to go back under general. You can see under Mercenary, there is a Remove Claim Jumpers mission, which is not at Microtech. It's at Her L4. Not bad money. Uh, illegal Monitors Detective. This is uh, money that a lot of people, a lot of mission a lot of people run. It's worth 20 million, or I'm sorry, 20,000 Alpha UEC. There are Search and Rescue missions. Um, I'm sorry, not Search and Rescue, but Search missions. So you can do a Cargo Assist. Basically, you need to get, you have to be able to have kind of, be able to put cargo in your ship. So there's a cargo assist mission worth 9,000 UBC. Um, this one is where you got to find a caterpillar's last known position, grab the stuff, put it into a locker. Um, Zeta Prolonide salvage claim. There's two of these. They're worth good money. You have to go to a wreck site, grab the stuff, stick it on your ship, and then go back. It doesn't really work with a starter ship unless you have a bigger starter ship like a, like a Cutlass or something like that. Uh, there are bounty hunter missions. I haven't done any Mountain Hunter missions with this character, so we're actually going to do one. Um, there's this, this one is specifically an apprehension evaluation. Um, this is actually where you need to go down onto the surface and you're going to have to hunt somebody, um, probably inside of a facility. Um, remember, everything under the general tab is actually legal, so you're not going to get a crime stat doing this. Um, this is an FPS mission. It is not a uh, spaceship combat mission, which is what I'm looking for. Um, and then there's the investigation tab. Investigation, investigate missing client Rafael De Luca. And uh, if you follow all this stuff, it's uh, you have to go to a cave. It's worth very little money, but you have to go to a cave. You have to explore this cave. There's not going to be probably not going to be any bad guys in the cave. Um, you just have to... Uh, basically survive it and find that person. And when you do, then you will actually get paid. You can see another search mission came up. Uh, it's the other Zeta Prolonide claim. There's a lot of people in the area taking missions right now. Um, for Bounty Hunter, though, if you if there's a space mission, then you could take that and uh, go around into space. And something that's important to know, if you're a Microtech or Arc Corp, there are no bounty hunter missions in space. Every mission is down in atmosphere of either the planet or one of the moons. There is nothing actually in space. If you need, if you want to do any fighting in space, like in an asteroid field or something, then you have to go to either the Hurston system or the Crusader system. And then you'll get those kinds of missions there in addition to missions that are in the atmosphere of moons or planets. So you got to keep that stuff in mind. Um, we're going to go over some more of these missions here as uh, we actually do the profession section, specifically on bounty hunting. Um, what else? Reputation. So if you you go down to your Moby Manager apps all the way in the bottom and you go over to Delphi, it gives you the uh, your reputation. Basically, the only thing that this character has ever done is Ling family hauling. And uh that is a, one of the cargo missions. It's basically a UPS driver and you basically go get a cargo box from a place, you load it up on your ship and you bring it to another place. And she's actually uh, finished one of those missions. So now she becomes a junior runner, which doesn't necessarily give you any perks or anything like that. Um, but it, when you go up uh, to a runner level, then you do get actually missions that give you more money and they're a little bit more dangerous as well. So right now, um, we do see that there are illegal monitors. Um, we'll go ahead and do this mission real quick. Uh, it's a quick 20,000. Um, basically, you're just blowing up some. You have to scan for some monitors. You, you shoot them down, blow them up. 
And then uh, any uh, bad guys that come with them, you got to kill those guys too. And then you make a quick 20 grand. So I'm going to do that. We're going to do this in fast forward mode. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do is show you how we get there. So we'll go ahead and hit accept offer. Now we're in the accepted section of the Moby Glass under contracts, right? And you'll see illegal monitors detected. It has a little GPS pin on it, which means we're tracking it. And then we're going to leave our Moby Glass. So now we're going to kind of look around. And on the screen, you see I see some, some other uh, NPCs and stuff floating around. But I'm looking for this right in the center. It says destroy monitors. Now, I could do some blind cargo jumps around the planets and be able to get to that but i can't get to it right away because it's it's in the middle i'd have to go through the planet which you can't do so one way i can get around that is i can use the map i can hit f2 and i'm going to hit the gps mark to go to our current location it is around microtech so it looks like it's on the other side of microtech um so if you need to learn how to use the map i have a whole nother section on that of this video i'm going to highlight the comma ray it looks oh no they're not at the comma ray well, they're close to the Comaray. We're not that far from it. But it looks like I can't necessarily tag them. So I'll have to do some blind jumps around the planet. So I'm going to go ahead and hit B. And I'm going to look for an orbital marker. So there's OM1 up here on the screen. We're going to jump to it. Okay. All right, so there's our blind quantum jump. At this point, I like to actually turn quantum off. That way, I can still see the mission marker. If you see it in the middle of the screen, it's right there. It's still on the other side of Microtech, so I need to take another um, orbital marker. I'm going to take OM4 this time. And I'm going to engage quantum. Okay, so now it's over to my right, and now I can actually jump to it if I hover my reticle over it and I quantum to it. So boom, it was actually at the satellite. So I, I'm not going to go step by step through this mission. I will let you figure that out on your own, but you, I am going to do this in fast forward mode so you can at least watch it for a little bit and then we'll show you the end result of that. And then we'll move on to the profession section of the video. So stay tuned to watch it. Okay, so as you guys probably saw in there, I killed um, like five or six enemy ships out in space. Um, in addition to that, I destroyed three uh, probes that never shot back, unlike the mining uh, mission things. And I made 20,000 off of the base mission, and I probably made about two or 3,000 off of just killing the bad guys. They were really easy. They're just prospectors. Um, and then I had one M50, but made short work of them with my gimbal weapons. And my Mustang actually is pretty quick and pretty decent in combat. So if we hit F1, we can go back to our contracts manager. Um, we can see up here under accepted, nothing is left except call to arms. If we go under history, We'll see that the illegal monitors mission is up there. Everything is green. We did destroy everything. We met all the uh, mission objective goals and we were actually paid our, our money. 
So that's really about it. If we go to reputation, there is no reputation for that because it's not tied into the reputation system right now. Um, yeah, there's not a whole lot of missions left right here that I can actually go do. Um, so with that, we'll, we'll touch more on missions and things you can do in the certain types of missions on the next section, which is professions. So I will see you there. So I hope you enjoyed the se section seven and section eight, the flying and the mission tutorial um, for the ultimate starter guide to star citizen in 2022. Um, I hope that this, uh, this guide actually aged well, uh, if you're watching this in the future and please look forward to my next guide. Uh, the next video, which is the last video in the series, that's the sixth video, and it contains section 9, 10, 11, and 12, which starts with professions and things that's a little more in the future of the game, but there are some professions that you can do right now in Star Citizen, as a matter of fact. And uh, then it goes into like the state of the game, how to report bugs, and the kind of where the game is right now. And uh, then we go into game resources and websites and things we we players use to help ourselves in the game. And then it's my final thoughts and the outro uh, to this entire video series. So thank you for watching so far, and I hope you watch the next one. Thanks for stopping by.